Welcome to vCloud Director 5.5 Tutorials. My name is Rick Powell and in this video we're going to walk through the process of increasing the disk space within a CentOS VM using vCloud Director 5.5. This is the process that we're going to go through to accomplish the task. First, we're going to add additional space within vCloud Director to the VM. Second, we're going to run fdisk to create a new partition. Third, we're going to run pbcreate to initialize the volume for the logical volume manager to use. Fourth, we're going to run vgdisplay to display the volume name. Fifth, we're going to run vgextend to add the new volume to the volume group. Sixth, we're going to run lvresize to increase the size of the volume group. And last, we're going to run resize2fs to resize the file system. Let's go ahead and get started. The first step is that we need to add additional disk space to our VM. In order to do this, we're going to click on My Cloud, and then we're going to click on VMs over here on the left. And it's showing us uh, all the VMs that we have created in our organization. And here's the one that we'll be focusing on, uh, the CentOS 6.4 installation. So with the VM highlighted, I'm going to right-click, go down to Properties, and in the Properties screen, I'm going to click on the Hardware tab. And as you can see, right here in the middle, my disk 0 is 16 gigabytes in size. At this point, we have a few ways in order to accomplish this. One is, we can just simply increase the size of disk 0, and then later on we can add that additional space into the logical volume manager. Another method is we could create another separate disk, give it a certain size, and then at a later time we can add that additional disk into logical volume manager and increase the size of our volume. For this demonstration, I'm just going to increase the size of disk zero. So I'm going to highlight this, and we're just simply going to make this an even 30 gigabytes in size. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. For the next step, we need to log into the operating system to perform the next number of tasks. And in order to do that, is I'm going to come up here and just click on this icon to launch the console. Now that my system is rebooted, I'm going to log back in as root. And now we're going to run the fdisk utility against slash dev slash sda, which is our first hard disk. We'll do fdisk slash dev slash sda. And I'm going to press the letter M so it will show us uh, the help, all of our choices, enter. I'm going to start off by pressing the letter P to display our partition table. Press enter. And as you can see, I have two partitions defined, SDA1 and SDA2. And if you look at SDA2 and you follow it out to the right, you'll see that it's defined as a Linux LVM, a Logical Volume Manager. And you can see just to the left of it, the ID for that partition type is 8E. And you'll see where that comes into play in just a minute. I'm going to go and press M to display our menu option again. And then I'm going to choose the one almost in the middle, the letter N, to add a new partition. And then Enter. And for this partition, I'm going to create a primary. So I'm going to press the letter P, Enter. And the number of the partition, remember 1 and 2 are already defined, so I'm going to press the letter 3 to define partition 3. And here I'm just going to accept the defaults for the first cylinder to start with, and I'm also going to accept the default here of the last cylinder, because it recognizes the newly added disk space. Alright, at this point it's created the partition for us, so I'm going to press the letter M again and enter. The next step is we need to change the partition system ID. And if you look at our options and you see the letter T, that's the option we're going to use to change that. So I'm going to press the letter T, enter. What partition number do I want to change? Well, the one that I just created, which is 3. And what is the hex code? Remember, just a few minutes ago when we looked at the partition table and I pointed out the SDA2, and out to the right, the system ID was Linux LVM, 
and then the ID to the left of it was 8E, that's what we're going to enter in here. We want to define this as the same system ID type. So we're going to press 8E and enter. And I'm going to press the letter M. Now, if you didn't know that partition ID, you have the option here, the menu option, L to list known partition types. And if I press L, enter, here are all the partition types, and as you can see in the third column over, about the 6th, 7th, 8th one down, you'll see Linux LVM, and just to the left of that is the 8E. So I'm going to press M to bring back our menus. And at this point, I'm ready to go, so I'm going to press the letter W to write the table to disk, and then exit. So this is saving our changes. And there we go. So if I go to the slash dev directory, and if I do an ls on sd asterisk, notice I do not yet have sda3. So at this point, I'm going to reboot so that the system can fully initialize. Now, I know there's other ways to accomplish this without rebooting, but again, just to kind of keep it simple, we're going to just reboot our system to reinitialize. Now that our system is rebooted, I'm going to go ahead and log back in as root. And let's go ahead and take a look in the dev directory. And now you can see that I have my SDA3 uh, that's been created. So now at this point, we're going to move on to the remainder of the steps, which should go fairly quickly. The first thing we're going to execute is pvcreate. We want to create this physical volume so that the logical volume manager can utilize it. So we're going to type in pvcreate slash dev slash sda3 because that's the new volume. We want to initialize that and it's successful. The next step is we want to find out what the existing volume group name being used is so that we can add to it. So we're going to type in lg for volume group display because we want to display the volume groups. And in this case, I just have one volume group created. And you can see that name up at the top is VG underscore CentOS64. The next command that we're going to use is the LG extend. And the syntax is LG extend space the volume group name. And in the previous command, we found out what the volume group name that we want to extend is, which is LG underscore CentOS 6.4 space, and then the device that we initialize using pvcreate. And that device is slash dev slash sda3. Now with this command, we're taking the new space associated with slash dev slash sda3, and we're extending the volume group called vg underscore centos 6.4 to take advantage of this new space. I'm going to go ahead and press enter and that was completed successful. This next command is going to allow us to resize the logical volume and we're going to increase the root partition or the root volume and so you'll see a reference to that in our syntax. And the command is lv resize space minus l space plus 100 percent free and that is case sensitive it all needs to be caps space slash dev slash lg underscore centos and then the logical volume that we want to extend and in this case we're going to extend lv underscore root and press enter and as you can see, that uh, command completed successful. And the last command that we want to execute is the command to resize the file system. And that command is resize to fs. And then we specify the logical volume that we want to resize. And in this case, it's slash dev slash vg underscore centos64. And it's the root file system that we want to uh, resize. So we're going to do LV for logical volume underscore root. Now, depending on the size of disk that we just added to the partition, this could take several minutes to 
maybe 10 to 15 or longer. Now that it's completed, let's go ahead and do a df space dash h, and you can see that our root file system has grown to just a little bit under 30 gig in size. One last note is if you do have multiple logical volumes on your system and you're not sure which volume you want to extend, you can go ahead and cd to slash dev slash lv underscore centos in my case, but whatever your um, volume group name is, cd to that directory and then take a look at the contents. So here I have my logical volume root and I also have my logical volume swap. But depending on your initial installation or post-installation, you may have other options available as well. That completes our task of adding additional disk space using vCloud Director to our CentOS VM.